I was born September 24th, 1992 in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. To my mom, Janelle, who was born and raised in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States, and my father, Marco, who was born and raised in Central America in the country of Honduras. My father immigrated to the United States at a very young age. I believe he was 19, I hope I have that correct. And soon after immigrating, joined the US Army and learned English in basic training. And my parents met each other while in the US Army. And my sister was born first in 1990. So around the time that my sister was born, my mom retired from the army to be a stay-at-home mom. And my mom and dad stayed together until I was about five years old in 1997, 98-ish. And so for the first five years of my life, we moved around. I was born in Kentucky and then I was just about like two weeks old when we flew to Germany and we lived in Germany for a while and then back to the United States and after my parents divorced my sister and I went to live with my mom and we all moved back to Washington State close to my mom's parents so she could be around them and family and um, I joined public school at the age of five kindergarten in Washington State and I went to grade school K through 12 in the same area of rural Washington State. And during my time going to grade school, K through 12, my dad spent the majority of that time moving all around the country uh, and parts of the world, multiple tours overseas, East Coast, West Coast, Alaska. And throughout that time, I would spend uh, short visits visiting my dad. And then I also went to Honduras several times throughout my childhood. It was kind of like an every other summer type of thing where my sister and I would go with my dad to visit the other half of my family who lived down there. So all of my cousins, aunts, uncles, and uh, before my abuelo and abuela passed away, they also lived there. So when I was very, very young, both my sister and I spoke a little bit of Spanish, but over time um, I lost it completely because I was super young when my parents split up and my mom didn't speak Spanish in the home. So I just grew up only knowing English. And then uh, my name is Diego. I look kind of like ethnically ambiguous. It's very confusing. So that's why my name's Diego and I don't speak Spanish. And uh, my grandma on my dad's side, I believe she was half Japanese. So when I was very young, I had very Asian looking eyes. And to this day, some people assume that I'm uh, part Asian, which I am. Uh, that would make me an eighth Japanese. When you put all of those puzzle pieces together, that kind of makes sense of what you see today. My mom eventually met my stepdad, Tim, who is also a native of uh, Washington State, and they spent the next five years together. And then I believe it's two, it was 2003 when they got married and they've been together ever since. So one of the most important factors of my childhood and upbringing, when I look back on it now, is that I was very loved at every stage. And that's the biggest privilege that I believe I have had in my life is a family and both parents who loved me very, very much. And they expressed their love not only in the relationship, the day-to-day -day interactions that they had with me and my sister, but also by being very mature post divorce. They had their reasons for splitting up and things didn't work out between the two of them, but it never affected the way that I viewed my father or the way that I viewed my mother. I just understood, hey, mom and dad, they're not going to be together anymore. Uh, I knew some of the reasons why, but it almost didn't even matter. It was like, let's just say it could have been so much worse. I know many people who have divorced parents who don't talk to each other anymore. They want nothing to do with each other. And that was not the case for me. My parents still get along. They can still talk to each other. My dad still goes to Thanksgiving with my mom's family and vice versa. Like they can coexist and co-mingle and everything is, is fine. Very fortunate for me and my sister to have parents like that. And then when my stepdad came into the picture, it was very much the same. Like we kind of took to Tim and he was a great, he's about the best stepdad you could ask for. You know, he wasn't trying to fill anyone's shoes. He just did the best that he could to 
be his true authentic self and I've learned a lot from him. I've talked about that a lot on this channel. He was, him and my dad are very, very different. My father being from Central America and, and joining the US Army and, and living this military life. And, and then my stepdad being this r very like rural country man, DIYer, college educated. And this is like, so I have these two very well-rounded, very different, but very well-rounded father figures that helped, um, that I learned a lot from, that helped me grow up and become who I am today. And then my mom just being this super rock solid person that I could go to anytime I needed to, anytime I needed help with anything, very supportive. And just, I would, this is what I always tell people about my mom. I don't know that she's ever sat me down and gave me a speech about Diego. These, This is right and this is wrong. And these are things that you shouldn't do and this is the way that you should treat people. It was always, she just led by example. She, I just watched her live her life and conduct herself. I just knew instinctively like <laughs> my mom is awesome and I want to be like my mom. She's someone to be looked up to. It's just very obvious. So extremely fortunate I am to have the upbringing that I did. So K through 12, public school, no homeschooling, kindergarten through fourth grade, and then middle school was fifth grade through eighth grade, then high school was ninth through 12th. So during grade school, I would say I was pretty well liked. I had several friends, uh, wasn't really any like great enemies with anybody, but wasn't really like super, I mean, I did have my best friends but I pretty much got along with most everybody, I would say, generally speaking. <laughs> School yearbooks, oh man. Are yearbooks still a thing? Do kids these days know anything about yearbooks? <laughs> then once high school rolled around, um, I was just super duper shy, very introverted. My circle of friends went down from like, uh, you know, I, I speak to all these people, but I have this small group of my best friends that I hang out with to like all the, the groups were all gone. And it was like my best friends. And that was it. I was in class just being silent, not really talking to anybody. <laughs> and so I took part in this program called Running Start, where you could go to the community college and take college courses and earn college credits while still in high school. So I graduated high school with my associate's degree because of that. And because of my dad's military service, there's this thing called the post 9-11 GI Bill. And so my sister and I split up that GI Bill, those GI Bill benefits. I got two years of college paid for, my sister got two years of college paid for. Throughout high school, math was my best subject. I was always the one who was tutoring my friends with their math homework because algebra made total sense to me. Like everybody talks about like the variables, I don't get, they start throwing letters into math and it's like, it just made it all confusing. But to me, it was like, this is, it makes a lot of sense to me. Like the letter just represents, it could be any number. That's why it's called a variable. So I mean, Both sides of the equation are equal. Uh, you do order of operations and right. like, you, it's, it's like, this makes sense to me, guys. It's not that hard. <laughs> and so that was the major that I chose because it made the most sense. So very long story short, I go to college and I spend three years. So I had to pay for one year of college, but, uh, I got those two years paid for and then it took me one extra year just because of credits and major and whatever just details that don't really matter. And I still have most of my binders from college. The more complex math classes that I took just so I can say that, hey, at one point in time, Diego was really smart, or at least he looked smart on paper. College. <laughs> I haven't looked at this stuff in a long time. I can't believe I did all this. I don't remember what half of this stuff even means. I earned my bachelor's degree in secondary math education. So I was going to be a high school math teacher. That was what I would graduated college to do. So to sum up the college years very briefly, it was much like high school. I spent 90% of my time in the library and then the other 10% of my time in the gym. <laughs> A very minute percentage socializing. So I graduate from college. I've got my bachelor's degree in secondary math education. So now I can apply to jobs anywhere I want to become a teacher 
in a public school. To make another very long story short, obviously I'm not a teacher. <laughs> I'm not a public school teacher. I could make a whole video about why that is the case and what I think about public education and my evolution and what I think about it and all those types of things, but I will not go there. I just wanted to tell that part of the story. So I graduate from college. I don't use my degree to get a job. And so now I'm just floating. And this is the time. So I graduated in 2014, graduated college in 2014. And around this time, tiny houses were the thing, big thing. And my mom was, she loved tiny houses and my mom loves drawing up house plans. And so she spent so much time drawing up tiny house plans because she was all about it. And she told me one day while I was going through this phase of trying to figure out what I need to do with my life, she's like, Diego, we got everything. We got power tools, we got a shop, we have the property. I know you don't like you're so don't want to move back home into your parents because you'll feel like a failure. <laughs> it's like you want to make it out on your own. That's why you're at this in this apartment and you're like eating top of ramen and because you like went to college and you will not move back home because you'll you'll feel like a failure if you do that. But she's like, you should come and work for our small construction business. It was just my mom and my stepdad. They ran an excavation business where they would go around and do small jobs and do excavator work for people. And I was like, ah, freaking construction after I've gone to college and earned my degree, that's like a step down. And so after thinking about it, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I, I don't want to be in an apartment anymore. I'm wasting money paying rent. So I'm going to move back in with my parents and I'm going to build a tiny house. And I'm going to take all this rent money and all the money that I'm earning and I'm going to put it into this tiny house. And I'm going to start working for my parents and I'm going to take all that money and put it into my tiny house. And over the next 12 months, that's what I did. I worked five days a week, Monday through Friday, eight hours a day. And then Saturdays and Sundays, I built the tiny house. I worked on the tiny house and that's all I did. I didn't hang out with friends. I worked, I worked out and I worked on the tiny house. <laughs> so much like college, I just was like laser focus on this goal and achieve it. And that's what I did. And then I ended up doing that, continuing to work for my parents' excavation business uh, for the next several years. Uh, I think it was like five or six years. I lived in the tiny house. Uh, at some point, I moved it to my grandparents' property because my parents moved and I didn't want to move my tiny house with them, but my grandparents was nearby, so I just moved the tiny house to my grandparents because that made more sense. And I lived there and I worked as a construction worker and eventually I was, you know, I wanted to move on like, okay, I've, I worked for my parents. I, I did this thing. I built the tiny house, got on my own feet, so to speak. Now I need to, I've built my resume in the construction industry. Now I want to go find a good job, like a high paying job with a 401k. And I need to be like a manager in construction. I don't want to just be a grunt worker for the rest of my life. So I applied for several jobs and I finally got one and I got this job and it was the dream job, right? You, I was gonna make six figures very soon after being hired. It was gonna be a short time where I was gonna be making six figures and I was gonna have my own desk and I was gonna set the schedule for all these construction workers and they were gonna come to me and I was just gonna go to job sites and fill out paperwork and type on a computer and I was gonna be the man and I was gonna be making money and I was gonna be driving a company truck and hell yeah, that's the life I wanna live. And I worked there for one month and realized that nope, that ain't it either. <laughs> this machine is gonna keep on churning. It, that, that's what it does. It just churns and it churns and it spits people out and then it picks someone else back up who's in the position that I was in. And then when that person gets tired, it throws them off and it picks up another person. And I just like, I, there's no, just, just didn't want to do it. That's another long story. So I quit that job. And around this time, very serendipitously, you could say, I meet Patrick south and his family the south family patrick sees an advertisement for i guess it was uh, the timetable is a little mixed up here but basically patrick saw a business card for uh, my family's excavation business this is when they move to the area of washington where i live and so patrick hires us to excavate on their land and at this patrick runs a youtube channel called The Axel Show. It's a very popular channel, a family-friendly show. It's Patrick and his wife, and Axel was very young, and they had just had River at this point. River was a baby, and they're kind of this off-grid family that plays with trucks and makes 
content for families to embrace outdoor adventure and spending time together. And I was like, man, that's really cool. And I, I watched some of their videos and it's very like, it's clearly for little kids. It's like not my, uh, I would have never discovered their show had I not just met Patrick the way that I did because I'm not the demographic. So <laughs> this whole time that we're doing this job, my stepdad, Tim, is like, man, you should you should get to know Patrick and talk to him. That's like a really cool thing that he does. Like I, I was a consumer of YouTube content at the time. So I watched his videos. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's cool that they like make a living doing YouTube, but what am I, how do I fit in there? Like it's not, that's not something that I want to do. And I'm not the type of, even if it was, I'm not the type of person who's gonna go to Patrick and be like, hey man, what you're doing is awesome. Like, I want to be a part of it. Even though I haven't proven myself, like you have no reason to bring me on to your team because you have no idea who I am. So I was like, at the very least, if anything is gonna happen with this Patrick guy, I'm just gonna do what I do, which is work really hard and just, just be me. And if it's right, it's right. So that's what I did. We did this excavation job. We did a good job as we did in our business. <laughs> and Patrick took note of that. He's like, hey, there's this, here's this young guy who's like very, seems like a go-getter, does a really good job. And so he gets my number and he calls me later on and he's like, hey man, I'm gonna do another project. Would you be willing to operate an excavator that I'll rent? I just need an operator and I'll pay you by the hour. I was like, heck yeah, that would be awesome. So I did that one time and then I did it another time. And so this is like, now the timetable is making sense. When I depart my parents' construction job, I meet Patrick and then I start doing work for him. And about that time, my parents are like, hey, Diego, you gotta decide whether you're gonna take over this construction business or we're just gonna close it because we're like physically, we're we're done with construction. We want to retire from this. We don't wanna do that like crazy physically demanding work anymore. Tim's back is really jacked up and he just can't do that type of stuff anymore. But if you want to take over this business and hire people, that's what you can do. And I was like, that's not what I wanna do. I wanna go work for a big company. And so I got that job for the big company. And then I was working for Patrick and all this, all this stuff was kind of coinciding around the same time. And so I, I quit that job with the big company and I'm working for Patrick doing small projects and I'm driving for Uber at the same time <laughs> just to make money. Like I needed money and uh, what I was doing for Patrick wasn't quite enough. And so Patrick is noting this. He knows that I'm like, kind of just floating and trying to make money, but I'm the type of person who's like, he knows that I quit this job and I'm trying, I'm looking for something out of the ordinary. I wanna be, you know, we, we have this kindred spirit, Patrick and I in the South family of like, we don't wanna be a part of a, another cog in the system and we wanna live freely and on our own terms and that type of thing. And so that's when he hired me as a full-time employee of his business the adventure agents which was a new youtube channel that he was starting around this time that he met me and it wasn't going to be the axel show it was going to be uh, you know the actual show is, was very specific with axel and daddy playing with construction trucks now the adventure agents is going to be kind of a family oriented like the whole south family going out on adventures and being agents of adventure in the world and Patrick had always wanted to, uh, well, I don't know about always, but he wanted to start selling merchandise. And so he's like, hey, Diego, what do you think about selling some hoodies and t-shirts out of your tiny house? Because <laughs> that's where I live. And uh, they didn't really have the space or like a warehouse or anything. So that's where we started was I, uh, you know, as a business, we bought a packing slip printer machine and some poly mailers and we bought a small order of tees and hoodies in like kid sizes and I fulfilled merchandise orders from our e-commerce website out of my tiny house and to make another long story short we went from my little tiny house to a shed that I built on their property a 12 by 12 shed and when we outgrew the 12 by 12 off-grid shed that was run by a gas generator and a cell phone booster to, for internet power. We eventually outgrew that and then we moved into the city in a townhouse and we had like this serious like you know it was a garage and an office space and then an upstairs apartment. It's one of those units where it's like you know you can walk on the street and there's like a street side market and then above it is 
apartment complexes where people live. So you, it's like a work live situation. So we built the business to the point where it was paying, I was living where the business was operating and it was just this uh, awesome thing that we had going for a while. We did really, really well selling merchandise for the adventure agents audience and reaching people and we did the whole, uh, I, I spent an entire summer, the summer of 2021, I believe, traveling around the United States, setting up treasure hunts, maybe it was 2020, can't quite remember. But I set up a treasure hunt in nine different cities in 30 days and it was this crazy adventure there's a video on it it's really cool if you know nothing about this there, i'll put a link in the description of this video so you can watch that it, that's a really cool video that's one of the things that i'm probably the most proud of at this point in my life that i've done is when it comes to video editing and like creating something with the help of Patrick and Sarah, like that was, that was a pretty amazing experience. And so through all of the things that I did with the adventure agents, spending all that time with Patrick and really being behind the scenes and being a part of some of the videos that he made, uh, he allowed me to make a couple of videos for the channel. And I just learned over the course of several years what it takes to film and what it takes to edit and what it takes to run an e-commerce business. <laughs> like, again, I'm making a lot of long stories very, very short in this video, but very recently, things with the Adventure Agents channel have slowed down. They're not putting out as much content. And with that, the merchandise side of things really started to slow down. And then I was like, okay, Diego, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Because we, we did this thing with the Adventure Agents and it was this great ride, but it's looking like um, through no fault of any party involved, it was like, we're, we're gonna move in different directions now. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> are you gonna go get a job again? Or uh, So I took a giant leap of faith and said, you know what, Patrick, uh, I'm gonna pull the plug on this and I'm gonna go all in on my own YouTube channel and I'm gonna give it everything I've got. I'm gonna put all of my life savings, all the money that I've earned working for you and through previous experiences in my life, I'm going to cut off my income <laughs> and I'm not going to make any money and I'm just going to put all of my money into this off-grid cabin and I'm gonna make videos until the bank account runs dry and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do after that. <laughs> so that's how I got to where I am right now, making these videos that you've seen over the past, I don't know how long it's been now, but my whole leap of faith that I took is going to work out crazily enough. I just had no idea what was gonna happen. I had made a few videos for the Adventure Agents channel and on my channel that had caught the algorithm somehow. And I made a few shorts and I was like, man, I kind of feel like I've learned this formula where I, I know how to make a short. And I was like, man, I really, I think I know how, to, <clears throat> I know how to do this. Like I can, I can do this continually, but you just, you have no idea if it's gonna work or not. There's all kinds of different, uh, there's so much involved with this, but basically I just, I was like, I, I can do this and I will be so mad at myself if I don't give it a try. If I find myself in this position in my life where I'm, I'm gonna pull the plug on adventure agents and I'm in this like phase where I, I can give it a try and I, and I didn't, I'll always think back like, man, you were in this perfect position. You got like this fresh experience. You know how to edit. You got this cabin in the woods. You got this savings. Just like give it a try and see what happens. And so that's what I did. I just went all freaking in <laughs> because of a lot of you and your viewership. People discovered several of my videos that like blew up and then I could tell they went back and they watched my old content and that helped grow the channel and grow the channel and so it's very cliche everybody says this when they make these types of videos but it's like it's true it's because of all of you that are watching this that I am at this point right now uh, that's why at the end of every single one of my videos I say I really appreciate it and uh, that's because I do anyways that's how I got from uh, where I was as a baby to where I am now. So I wanted to give that backstory on myself because I'm going to be, this this channel is me making videos about my life. I don't know where my life's gonna go next. Obviously you can see that it's very, very random. I'm friends with Al, who is Patrick's neighbor, and I'm friends with the South family. And, oh, another beanbag chair. 
Oh man, this one's really heavy. Oh! <laughs> one ancient strong man. I'm gonna be making a video with my mom and Tim, and I'm gonna be making a video with my dad soon. And I could have just, I'm um, actually, you know, I got the footage and I started to edit those videos. And I was like, I need to let people know who these people are and, and who I am, because I, it would just make more sense for people to understand this whole backstory. Uh, so now I have this video on my channel where people can go to and be like, these videos are cool, but I don't know, like, what's the deal with this guy? He's very random and all over the place. Uh, so this, this is me and this is my journey to YouTube. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.